Welcome boys and girls and the 62% sexy people who haven't subscribed yet. Welcome to another leaked video straight from the heart of Warwick. Today we're gonna watch this awful jaw dropping piece that is shown to Gilead students during their 6 month indoctrination course. You're gonna have an inside look into what happens when a circuit overseer deletes an elder. It's gonna be a painful watch but don't worry we're in this together. Special thanks to Warwick Pimo for leaking this propaganda. I think his channel is down at the minute, but he's still alive somewhere, so hey, if you're watching this, shout out to you, man. Hopefully your channel is back up very soon. Without further ado, let's get into it. Brothers, thank you for considering this matter regarding Brother Brown and the impact that his family situation is having on the congregation. I asked you, brothers, to review his qualifications as an elder after we spoke and Brother Brown had an opportunity to explain to me some of the decisions that he's made for his family. I'm aware that you brothers have considered this matter before, but since then, another one of Brother Brown's daughters have enrolled in a school for higher education, which raises questions as to how this affects the congregation. When we make decisions, it's important that we consider the conscience of the congregation as well as the elder body. Brother Brown, I know this can't be easy for you, and it's not easy for us either. Please be assured that we love you, and we only want what's best for you and your family. Remember, you're among friends here, so please feel free to express yourself and to answer any questions that your fellow elders may have. So this is supposed to be a meeting with a circuit overseer, but it feels more like a judicial committee. The crime? Letting your daughters go to college. Brothers, we are obligated to put the interests of the congregation first. Brothers, with all due respect, I don't agree with you that the congregation is disturbed about my or my family situation. I've been in the congregation for 20 years. I know the publishers very well, and I'm sure no one is disturbed about my daughter's pursuing higher education. Um, as far as my younger daughter is concerned, she was judicially reproved, but it wasn't announced to the congregation, so she's repentant. And no one has approached me uh, expressing that they're disturbed about me supporting my daughters seeking higher education, trying to better themselves. It's not like they're leaving the truth. Notice how each character is portrayed in this video. The elder being questioned gives off an arrogant vibe, the while the other NPCs are calm and collected. They sound like sedated robots. Brother Brown, thank you for expressing how you feel. Let's give your fellow elders an opportunity to express their observations or concerns. Brothers, are there any comments or questions that you have for Brother Brown? Brother Anderson, please. The Brown, it is true. Some of the congregation have been negatively affected. They've been disturbed by the example of your daughters pursuing higher education. Uh, you've openly talked about wanting the best life for your daughters. And this has given some the impression that the only way to get the best life, it's not through spiritual things, but through secular pursuits. Uh, some of the congregation are even confused about what the organization has stated regarding pursuing higher education. Uh, in fact, Sister Single's daughter is considering pursuing higher education because of the example of your daughters. Oh no, your daughter's example is encouraging other young girls to pursue college? Only in Watchtower land would this be seen as something bad. Thank you, Brother Anderson. Brother Williams, please. And just because the brothers and sisters have not approached you about this matter, doesn't mean that they're not disturbed by what they see. They understand that it's a personal decision and that's something that you have to decide, but it still doesn't mean that your freeness of speech is not effective. In fact, the freeness of speech of the entire body of elders as well as how successful we are as shepherds has been affected as well. Um, as Brother Anderson mentioned, when we promote the full-time ministry as the best way of life, this situation 
has now influenced how some of the congregation uh, set that as a goal or even want to set that as a goal for their life. These robots only think in black and white. They see going to college as the opposite of pioneering. Why not have both? Promoting full-time service as the best way of life doesn't mean you have to demonize college. You know that, right? Andy, the scriptural qualifications at 1 Timothy chapter 3 say that an overseer in verse 4 and 5 should be a man presiding over his own household in a fine manner, having his children in subjection with all seriousness. Verse 3 says that he should be reasonable, not quarrelsome. Now, I know this is difficult for you, it's difficult for us to- Don't tell me about being difficult. When we started this discussion, you all brothers said you, you love me and my family. Right now, I'm not feeling it. You've been nothing but negative. Yeah, I'm totally with Brother Brown on this one. He has been an elder for 20 years, has worked with these three men for who knows how long, and just when the CEO happens to visit, they all turn against him. <laughs> what a pack of hyenas. I would be furious as well. Brother Brown, thank you for your comments. Please take a seat in the other room and we'll call you back when we make our decision. Brown was given time out, just like a little kid. Now brothers, please open your shepherd book to chapter eight. You'll notice paragraph 30 discusses when a member of an appointed man's household pursues higher education. And paragraph 32, which outlines the procedure for reviewing the qualifications of such a man. Now, what are your observations? Brother Williams, please. Brother Brown has served faithfully for many years. Uh, but the question that's within paragraph number 30 is important. How is he viewed by the congregation? Sad to say, the actions of his family have, had, have caused him to lose the respect of the congregation. In fact, some publishers have mentioned that if they need scriptural advice on family life, They'll just talk to another elder. Thank you for those comments, Brother Williams. Brother Anderson, please. The same paragraph says, if an appointed brother's children pursue higher education, does his life pattern show that he puts kingdom interests first in his life? I don't think any of us can honestly say that Brother Brown's family is viewed as putting kingdom interests first in their life. Their conversations aren't spiritual. And I don't think the family, the wife, or the daughters have ever regular or auxiliary pioneered. I just can't believe what I'm hearing. So just because Brother Brown doesn't have a complete control over his family's schedule and conversation topics, he is failing as an elder? This is so unnecessarily harsh. That is a cause for concern. Brother Miller, please. I agree with those comments. And in addition, the last question in Paragraph 30 asks, does the pursuit of higher education interfere with regular meeting attendance, meaningful participation in field service, or the theocratic activities? His girls are not visible in the ministry, and because of their class schedule, they rarely are at meetings. It's obvious that spiritual things have become second place in their life. As you can see, it's all about appearances. Spirituality is always measured by how many activities you perform, not the qualities of your character. So it appears that they're drifting spiritually. Brother Anderson, please. Yeah. And 1 Peter 5, 3 says, an overseer should be an example to the flock. Bah. But the reality is, the family is a poor example. And they're having an influence on other young ones in the congregation who are now also considering pursuing higher education. Now looking at paragraph 31, what would you brother say has been his response to the counsel that has been given? Brother Miller. It hasn't been well. He's been belligerent. He's accused us of overstepping and he keeps insisting that this is a personal family decision. They understand that it's a personal decision and that's something that you have to decide. He never took into consideration the feelings of the congregation. Unfortunately, he no longer has the freeness of speech as mentioned at 1 Timothy 3.13. Hmm. And as it says in 1 Timothy 3.3, 3, 
an overseer needs to be, uh, or excuse me, should be reasonable and not quarrelsome. And James 3.17 reminds us wisdom from above is peaceable, reasonable, ready to obey. Uh, but sadly, well, he doesn't accept counsel from any of us. Uh, when we've counseled him on matters, well, he justifies it or minimizes it. Um, he bullies the body. Wait, but how is he supposed to accept your counsel? Do you expect him to stop his daughters from going to college? or to force his family to become pioneers? His daughters are already grown up. He couldn't control their decisions even if he wanted to. It's his experience and his opinions that have dictated outcomes. And I'm sure you've seen that today. I did observe that. Thank you for those thoughts. Every elder takes decisions based on their experiences and opinions. Anyone who tells you otherwise is just BSing you. Brother Williams, do you have something more to add? Yes, I did. Uh, initially, the first time uh, we discussed this, we agreed that he doesn't have the respect of the body. But Brother Brown is very outspoken, <laughs> and he's very skilled. He's very skilled at manipulating the rest of the body to adjusting our viewpoints towards his viewpoint. Hmm. Thank you for sharing that. He can be rather persuasive. Is there anything else that you brothers would like to add to our consideration? I didn't have anything more. No. Okay. So we need to come to a decision regarding his qualifications. You're too stupid to see. He made up his mind 10 minutes ago. And we'll need to tell him the scriptural reasons why that decision is made when we invite him back to the room. Do you mean you want us to tell him? <laughs> I'm not sure. Wait, so you've been backstabbing this man for 10 minutes now and you're too scared to fire him from your boys club? What a little bitch. Uh, Andy always has such a hot temper. That's why it's usually easier to go along with his demands. Well, that may have been true in the past. I know that you brothers want to do things that are in harmony with Jehovah's Holy Spirit and the direction from his organization. After weighing all the facts and comparing them against the scriptural qualification and remembering to whom we're accountable, what do you brothers recommend? That was such a leading question. Brother Anderson. I'm disappointed to say it, but I feel like we should recommend his deletion. I don't think we can say that he continues to have free nips of speech or that he's an example in presiding over his family. I agree. In addition, he's neither peaceable or reasonable when things don't go his way. All in favor of this recommendation? Kangaroo Court. Okay, it's unanimous. So we have considered the guidelines from Jehovah's Organization. You brothers have provided me with the scriptural reasons and I support your recommendation. Brother Anderson and Brother Williams, would you like to express to Brother Brown the reasons for this decision? And Dan, could you please ask Brother Brown back to the room so that we can inform him of our unanimous decision and we can show him from the scriptures how we reached this decision. You didn't use the scriptures. You used the shepherd book. Brother Brown, thank you for your patience and waiting. After prayerfully weighing all of the facts and considering the scriptures, the body of elders unanimously decided to recommend your deletion as an elder, and I agree with them. The brothers will now explain to you the reasons why we reached this decision. Brother Brown, as you know, 1 Timothy 3 verses 4 and 5 uh, says that an overseer should be a man presiding over his household in a fine manner, having his children in subjection with all seriousness. So treating your children as slaves? The elders unanimously agree that your decision to support and encourage your daughters to pursue higher education has damaged their spirituality.
if your spirituality is damaged because of a couple of freshman classes, then maybe that spirituality is not worth keeping. And verse 3 says that as elders, we need to be reasonable and not quarrelsome. But we've observed for some time now that uh, when dealing with matters, even this one, you've not responded kindly. You've been quarrelsome. You've even shouted at us. And so when we weighed all the facts and we looked at the scriptural qualifications in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and Titus 1, well, you no longer meet some of those qualifications. Do you understand the reasons, the scriptural reasons for our decision? Are you kidding me? I don't want to hear any more of this nonsense. You're just being unfair and unreasonable. I've done nothing but work hard for you brothers in this congregation. It, it's absurd. It's ridiculous. Brother Brown, we understand you're upset. Perhaps it would be a good idea if we offered a prayer. W would you mind if I did that? Sure, if you want to say a prayer, go ahead. What a caricature of a man. We're just missing the steam coming out of his nostrils. <laughs> the writers of this skit just wanted to make him as silly as possible. Thank you for allowing me to pray. Be assured that the brothers prayerfully considered this recommendation. They weighed all the facts. Brother Brown, the brothers here, they love you. Oh, fuck off. We would like for you to consider something that David said is found in Psalm 141 and verse 5. These brothers here, they love you, your family, and the congregation. I don't know about that. It just makes me so angry. It's, these brothers don't even want me on the body anymore. Hurtful. I can understand how you might feel, but in reality, the brothers do want you on the body, and they hope that you can return. Let me ask you, do you think that the elder body is accountable to Jehovah to uphold his high standards for appointed men? And isn't that what you would encourage them to do? Yes. That's why when we weighed all of the facts and the scriptural qualifications, as well as considering the direction from Jehovah's organization, the body of elders and I decided that you no longer meet the qualifications for an appointed man. I understand what you're saying, but I do not agree with this decision. Prayerfully think about what we talked about today. In other words, who cares about your feelings? Just bend over and take it. And of course, if it is your decision to appeal, please consult the information that's found in the Shepherd Book, Chapter 8, Paragraph 39. Might as well turn in your complaint note to the nearest McDonald's, because appealing this decision is not going to change anything. It just makes me so angry. And our friend at Warwick ends this video with some fascinating questions. My friends, this is what happens when the son or daughter of an elder decides to go to college. The questions I have are as follows. Why should the parents suffer consequences of a matter that, according to the publications, is considered a personal decision? In a time when the organization asks for more lawyers, doctors, and others, do you think you will find qualified personnel? I don't understand the reason for prohibiting higher education, but needing the help of people who went to college. I couldn't have said it better, my friend. The Bible never speaks against attending college. Hell, the writers of the New Testament were all highly educated in the Greek language. What, you think illiterate fishermen wrote the Gospels? Come on. Even Jesus himself was educated. Carpentry is difficult work and takes years to master. And according to the Gospels, Jesus could even read from the Jewish scrolls at a time when most people were illiterate. Is that not higher education, Watchtower? And why would the God of the universe, the most intelligent being in existence, be against the acquirance of knowledge? Make it make sense. These are entirely the opinions of men, which is ironic because the Shepherd the Flock book encourages elders to never take dogmatic decisions, which is exactly what was done here. Cults are dogmatic, they're obsessed with unspoken rules. This toxic leadership starts from the very top from the governing body 
and runs all the way down to the everyday publisher. It creates this horrible culture where men you have worked with for years will suddenly turn against you once you stop fitting into their little prescribed mold. Where even when you're not breaking any explicit rules, you could still be doing something wrong. I'm so happy to be out. So thank you Warwick Pimo for this outstanding footage. Once your channel is back up, I can't wait to see what else you have for us in store. So guys, let me know what you thought of this leak in the comments below. It's super juicy, it's super fascinating to get this inside look into how Watchtower operates because we had never seen this video like ever. It's just so creepy and culty. So yeah, that was pretty cool leak. So please check me out on Patreon, on Instagram, all those all that good stuff. Guys, this takes a lot of work, but it's always worth it for you guys. So thank you so much. I'll catch you on the next time. Have a wonderful day and stay away from the tower. Just makes me so angry.